He said, no, we don't have a merry-go-round at Berkeley. I said, you really ought to get one. You know, you could learn some good science on a merry-go-round. If you put some fourth graders on there, any fourth graders in here, last year or next year, fourth graders, I know it's summertime here. All right, I like fourth graders. I spent the best five years of my life in the fourth grade. That's before they diagnosed ADD. <clears throat> By the time my brother was in fourth grade, we all knew what he was going to be when he got out of high school. 32. <laughs> well, we're going to put some fourth graders on the merry-go-round and get the high school football team out there to get it spinning clockwise as fast as it will possibly go. Now, if you have a digital watch, you may not know what clockwise means. I'll tell you later. We're going to spin the merry-go-round clockwise. The kids are going to go through four phases. They start off in phase one. They're screaming at the football players. Come on, let's go faster, faster. Can't you go any faster? You get up around 30 miles an hour. The kids enter phase two where they stop screaming. They just quietly concentrate on trying to hang on for dear life. You get up around 30 miles an hour. The kids enter phase uh, 60 miles an hour. They enter phase three where they start screaming again. But now they're screaming, stop, stop, please slow down. Don't stop, though. Keep going faster and faster. When you get to about 100 miles an hour, you should enter phase four. That's where the kids begin to fly off the merry-go-round. Now, when this happens, you will notice a very interesting phenomena of physics. If the merry-go-round is going clockwise, when the kid flies off, the kid will be spinning clockwise until he encounters resistance, like a tree or a pole. That's because of a law in physics known as the conservation of angular momentum. See, if a spinning object breaks apart, the pieces that fly off are going to spin the same direction because the outside is moving faster than the inside. And we could talk all day about the conservation laws if you'd like, but the professor said, yes, I know about the conservation laws. I said, well, good, sir, then let me ask you a question. If the universe began as a spinning dot, like you said, why do two planets spin backwards and probably three? He got real quiet, puzzled look on his face. I said, sir, why do eight out of 91 known moons spin backwards? Why do Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune have moons going both directions at the same time? Huh. Why is the sun 98% hydrogen and helium, but the other planets are less than 1% hydrogen and helium? And why are these nine planets so different from each other? If it all came from a big bang, I mean, what's, why are they all so different? Very different compositions. And why do some whole galaxies spin backwards? CNN did an article, Goofy Galaxy Spins in Wrong Direction. I said, sir, why are these things going backwards? He said, I don't know. Why do you think they're going backwards? I was hoping he was going to ask that. I said, sir, it's real simple. You see, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and God did it that way on purpose just to make the Big Bang Theory look stupid. <laughs> yes, amen. Now, I do believe in the Big Bang because the Bible teaches the Big Bang. It says, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. In the original Greek, that's a Big Bang. So there's going to be a Big Bang. It just didn't happen yet. Okay. So kids, if you go to school and some professor says, hey, do you believe in the Big Bang? You should say, yes, I do, and you better get saved and get ready for it. The Big Bang is coming soon to a city near you. <laughs> By the way, if the world came from a Big Bang and slowly evolved over billions of years, why did Jesus die on the cross? What's the purpose of the death of Christ? And when the Bible says God's going to restore the world like it used to be, restore it to what? More death and suffering? <laughs> we cover more on that theistic evolution position in video 7. And the Big Bang Theory is ludicrous for numerous reasons, okay? If the Big Bang Theory were true, the matter would be evenly distributed, but it's not. Serious, serious problems with the Big Bang Theory. Even Fred Hoyle said, I have little hesitation in saying the sickly pall hangs over the Big Bang Theory. You get more on that in the book called The Evolution Cruncher. It's a 900-page book. It's only five bucks. Excellent book to give away to every kid in your high school. The second law of thermodynamics tells us everything tends toward disorder. If you leave something alone for a while, it's going to rot, rust, die, fall apart, or break down. Nothing gets better by itself. That's what the Bible teaches. The heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish. They wax old as doth a garment. Nothing gets better by itself. Take a look at your hairdo when you wake up in the morning. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Everything tends toward chaos, right? Here is Sue at 20. Here she is at 90. 
And here she is at 3,000. <laughs> everything tends toward chaos, folks, all right? All you have to do is nothing, and everything deteriorates, collapses, breaks down, wears out. That's what the second law is all about. Everything is getting worse. Nothing's getting better. But the textbook says, humans probably evolved from bacteria more than 4 billion years ago. Was your great, 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 bacteria? Evolutionists will say, well, Hovind, don't you know if you add energy, you can overcome the second law of thermodynamics. And the earth receives energy from the sun, so the earth is an open system, and that's how we overcome the law. I understand the argument, but they're missing the point. The universe is a closed system, number one. Number two, adding energy is destructive unless there's a special mechanism to use and harness the energy. See, the Japanese added a bunch of energy to Pearl Harbor one day. They didn't organize a thing for us, did they? So a few years later, we added some energy to a few of their cities, didn't we? You know, returned the favor. Didn't organize anything for them. Adding energy is destructive. The sun adds energy to the roof of your house, but it's going to destroy your house. The sun's energy will destroy the entire house. The sun's energy will destroy the roof on your car. It will destroy your upholstery. The sun's energy will destroy your paint job. <laughs> There's only one thing that can actually use the sun's energy. Chlorophyll. And one little plant cell is more complex than a space shuttle. Cover more on that on video four. Now, evolution violates the second law, and evolution is wrong. Okay? This textbook shows the kids a fossil starfish. And it says, 3.4 billion years old, the remains of the early ancestors of modern human beings. Was your great, 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 great grandpa a starfish? How about Discover Magazine, November 2004? Was your ancestor a sea sponge? This is your ancestor. Wow, who's your daddy? <laughs> now, please don't laugh at this next picture, okay? This is going to be a picture of my brother <clears throat> when he first wakes up in the morning after his first cup of coffee, which apparently was a little too strong, okay? By the way, I've got to warn these kids. Kids, listen carefully. Do not drink coffee. Because if you drink coffee when you're young, when you get married, your babies will be born naked and illiterate. And tea is worse. There was an Indian once that drank four gallons of iced tea. That night, he drowned in his teepee. <laughs> be careful with that stuff. That's deadly. Anyway, this will be my brother. Now, please don't laugh. He can't help it. There he is right there. <laughs> Notice what the textbook says. 30 million years ago. Now, kids, let me translate that for you. Anytime a textbook says millions of years ago, what it means is, Long ago and far away. That means a fairy tale is coming next, okay? That's your warning, fairy tale coming up. 30 million years ago, these critters evolved. Well, there's that word again. you got to watch that one. It says they're ancestral to both humans and modern apes. Ancestors to humans? Grandpa? <laughs> what big eyes you have, Grandpa. <laughs> Uh, the better to see you with, my boy. You know, we've been teaching kids they're nothing but an animal, and today a lot of them act like animals. Even Barbara Reynolds figured it out. She said, your kids go ape in school? Here's why. He's being taught evolution. Guess what, Johnny? You're an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. <laughs> you mean I'm just an animal? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you ever stopped and thought that possibly what we're teaching the kids is maybe affecting how they behave? Hmm? What you believe determines how you behave. Kids are taught today, you know, that you're just an animal. The rock music these days is all full of death and destruction and blood. Well, the Bible says, they that hate me love death. Kids are taught today there are no absolutes. I was in a debate one time and this professor said, Hovind, there are no absolutes. I said, are you absolutely sure? <laughs> blew his little brain. Now, hold on a minute. How can I be absolutely sure? There's no absolutes. I was speaking in a public school in Pennsylvania a couple years ago, and this kid sat on the second row, and he said, Hovind, I'm an atheist. There's no God. I said, are you sure? He said, I'm sure. I said, well, let me ask you a question, son. I said, do you know everything? He said, oh, no, no. I said, okay, well, good. I said, do you think maybe you know half of everything? He said, no. 
I said, okay, well, let's just pretend for a few minutes that you know half of everything. Would it be possible then for God to exist in the other half you don't know? Brand new thought rattled around his brain for a while. Got lost, I'm sure. I said, by the way, son, if you're an atheist, let me ask you a simple question. How do you tell right from wrong? Ask an atheist that question sometime. How do you tell right from wrong? 